Hey, buddy, good to see you. Man, thank you for so having me. What a blessing, here. man. I'm so happy to be here. Well, it is a blessing to have you here. You're here in my home library study. Yes. And you've been playing piano and yes. your sister came along too. She what did. A great day. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Good to Thank see you, you, man. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. If I play it, if I play a twenty-second song on a on a piano, will they be able to hear the audio? Oh, they'll be able to hear. It. Totally. Let's start off with, with a little music. Cool. We got the grass tuning piano here. I'll play the one. <laughs> Major, but uh, Major yes. and I became friends a few years ago in Peru. In Peru, we yes. We were sitting on a bus together. Yes. I so, was right behind you. That was cool. Yes, that was a crazy random way to become friends. But yes, my name is Major. Um, I'm mostly known as musicians, and uh, I love music. I've been creating and working in the music industry since I was 16, just like working in the rap, pop, country, electronic, just main, mainstream music. And I started on this journey of trying to figure out how can, you know, what, how does sound affect people? How does vibration and things affect people? And we travel to all these sacred sites around the world. And that's where I met you in mm -hmm. Peru. Mm -hmm. um, I learned about Machu Picchu and we went with the group, the residence group. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, at that moment, it was like, we were kind of having the same intentions and, but just coming from two different worlds. And it was just like, uh, it was it was an awesome moment to, to me and since then we've stayed in touch and done many things since then i've implemented some of the work and mm -hmm. some of the things that we've learned in these trips some of the mathematics into the music and so now my vision is bringing sound healing into pop music that is so awesome yeah it's cool so tell us how do you bring sound healing into pop music yeah That's not, first of all you know like definitely a big goal yeah I and mean, how how do you think of yeah, something like crazy. that? Like you sit around and go, I'm going to bring sound healing in the mainstream pop. Yeah, no, it's crazy because I mean, well, the way that I got started in doing this was because um, first I saw, uh, I'm a cancer survivor. I'm a cancer survivor. And I, I had a vision before, before I had leukemia that I wanted to make an impact on the world, a positive impact. I knew that. I always had that. And I was thinking that, oh, I'm, this music was coming fairly easy to me and I'm getting a career in music and I'm earning money this way. Okay, so my vision, I'm gonna open up these centers and I'm gonna do all these things with what's the money from the music. That's what I was seeing as was my clear path. And then the cancer kind of came in and just threw that for a loop because I, at the moment I was thinking, I don't even know how, if I would make it to that point, like time-wise. And, and so like how, can, I started thinking of ways I can have an immediate impact. And I was at the show, I, I got blessed to produce for many awesome artists and one of, one of the best and most collab, frequent collaborators I worked with was Justin Bieber. And I was at his show in Mexico City and there, I was standing on the stage, like behind the stage watching him performing There's hundreds of thousands of people in the audience, all saying words that we wrote and created in a room just like this with just us. So I recognized like, whoa, there's a power in the music itself. For some reason, I hadn't made that connection. I I had, because I was making music without really an intention. I wouldn't say I was an awake person. I was just making music that sounded yeah. cool and I was getting money, this is great, hey. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't any thought behind what is it giving people, what, how is it making people feel? It, it was a very just uh, kind of, I was just in the flow, which was necessary to get me to that point in my path. But at that moment, I realized I had a big shift and it was like the world almost kind of stopped. I was like, this is it. Through this music, I'm going to make an impact. And so my first theory was, let me try to write lyrics that are super inspirational and positive. And my sales plummeted. Really? Flops. 
<laughs> Everything started flopping. Like when I was just saying, you know, let's dance, la la la, let's have fun. Sales up millions. Once I started saying, like, you know, let's be, you know, be better, Good change stuff. ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, oh, boy, there's a better. lesson in that. Fa fail. Like, I mean, I wouldn't say fail, but I know this is significant really? drop in the number and in in, wow. in the, the reach. And now that made me sad because I'm thinking, oh man, I got this purpose. I need to cancel. You know, this what how is this not connected? And I realized I had to take it a step deeper. I had to not just think about what I'm saying, I had to think about how the vibration and the sound itself is respecting people. And so I, I wanted to be able to find ways that I could say anything. I could say, la, 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 let's go party. But through the science and through the sound and through, you know, I, I, it would be having an impact on people. So that's kind of what led me down the entire rabbit hole, which ended up meeting you and, and many like other people who have kind of helped me along the way with that is because, you know, I was kind of stuck. You know, I felt like I have this thing I want to give. I, I want to, I know the music is powerful and I'm in this unique position to do this, but you know, so um, the journey has been awesome, but we recently, you know, it, it's, it's really cool because I've met so many people and I've also learned that many other artists today share an intention of that. We just don't know how, you know, a lot of people don't even know what is frequency, what is sound. People don't even know really what that is. <laughs> and I didn't, and I had worked as a so-called professional musician for 10, 15 years. I had no clue what any of that stuff was or how it would affect us, but we all know kind of intuitively uh, if you think about you go to the gym, you play a different music than you gotta play when you go to sleep, you know? So we have our own language of how, or if we're going on a date, we play a different song. So we have our own kind of language, but I was thinking about how can we gotta get a little more specific with it. Yeah. And, you know, so it's, it's been a great journey and, I, and I, I, I hope it's forever evolving. Well, first of all, for those uh, of you that are only hearing Major speak for the first time, you have to know this guy has a massive heart. He really has, he's like all love. He reminds me of, uh, of my very, very good friend, Boaz, who you met on the yes, trip. Yes, I love Boaz, he was awesome. And he's just like all heart and all love all the time. And that's one of the things I just really love about you because you bring that energy, that very high vibration, frequency to whatever it is that you're doing, whatever interaction you're having. So you've been working with like mainstream people for a long time. Mainstream, right? yes, most like, of the people here in the radio. Really? Yeah. So, like, can you give us an example of besides Marshall, Justin Bieber, Justin Drake, um, like Little Wayne, uh, Rascal Flatts. Oh, I like, yeah, like too. Yeah. People from all different genres: Martin Garrix, Selena Gomez. So, what do you do? What does it mean for you to work with them? Um, so, mostly, I was a music producer. Mm -hmm. So that means I was creating the soundscape, the music behind their singing. Wow. And then I started um, from working with Neo. Started learning how to do songwriting. So I was at, well, I was at one point making the music and the words for you know pop stars to sing they hear i did do would do what's called a demo version mm -hmm. which is like um i don't know if people know how it works but basically have someone else sing this song as a presentation to mm -hmm. say beyonce or anyone like mm -hmm. this hey listen to this song and if she likes it she'll take that person's mm -hmm. voice off and she'll re-record it sometimes I, you know do little things but that's kind of what my vision was and um just creating something to for another artist and in creating the demos, I got blessed with the opportunity to someone to say, those artists to say, we like your version. So I started even releasing my own songs. So it was, yeah, but I started off just making the music background for other people. So I remember when, you, when we were in Peru, you were talking about releasing your own music. Yes. Which now you've done. Which now we've done, yes. Dude. Yes, thank you. With so, thanks, big thanks to you guys, you know, for helping it and even just inspire on that path. Because I had learned about it mostly through people in the spiritual community, which I think is great, but I was lacking some of the um, math math community mm -hmm. that, that, that you guys added on. So that was big. Thank you for that. Yeah. So I remember the day we were sitting in the bus and you said, yeah, I'm thinking about switching over and trying some 432 Hertz music, but it doesn't always sound that great, right? And uh, and then like I somehow I think I showed you a paper that I'd written on four thirty two hertz, right there. Like the geometry of four hundred thirty two hertz. Yes. And what, what were you thinking about that when you read that? Well, for me it was just confirmation because, like I said, at that point I was on the edge. I had heard about it from a completely different context, like very spiritually synchronistically. I had heard about it, and then you showed me, hey, I have a paper. Yeah. showing this mathematically so for me it was just like such a confirmation of like this is 
I'm in the right path because that's exactly what I needed to. I didn't want to bring out something to people that had that that didn't have also a, a, a basis in some type of math. Mm -hmm. I didn't want it to just be completely just. Um, I didn't want to be, you know, to consider woo woo or anything mm -hmm. like that because I'm not. I'm not really that kind of person. I do. I am a spiritual person, but I also like to see some something that can. Got to be logic behind it. Some type mm -hmm. of logic. Mm -hmm. So for me, that that was that was big and showing, it. and that's awesome how it all lined up right there. Like how you had already written a paper. He this guy wrote a paper <laughs> about about the frequency I was thinking about. Um, I was thinking about making. So yeah, it was really big. Oh, really my pleasure. pleasure. It's such a joy for me to see how you've adopted so much of that understanding too, even to the art, you know, you just launched a clothing line. Yes. I mean, you guys have to understand really this guy's like, he's really not only a, a really successful musician now is a solo artist himself. And he's launched a fantastic album. My daughter is probably his biggest fan. No joke. Yeah, she's, she's I mean, right. she's like listening to his music all the time. Yeah. But not only that, but you're also like an effective CEO in a very challenging industry yes. with lots and lots of different aspects and complications, I guess, you know, with the way musicians get treated in today's world, uh, how they are monetized very differently in the Apple age versus how it has been, you know, for many, many years before. Absolutely. Everything has changed, like literally everything has changed. So. How have you been able to navigate through this world so successfully? Yes. Yesterday, you just told me a story that you were at someone's house. Yeah. If, if, you, if you're okay telling the story, maybe you're not. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. This world is crazy because it's constantly, yeah, like you said, we're living in a new time. We're living yeah. in a new time, a new era. And I was going to say about the technology and how it's changed things and yeah. how you're saying. Uh -huh. We actually connected before... Peru, and it wasn't directly, but I watched you, the documentary you funded. Sonic and that was geometry. Sonic Geometry. And that was one no of the joke. things as I first started down my path. No way. That was one of the first things I watched. Everything is interconnected. Yes. Everything. So this shows you right there. Yeah, like we were actually connected. So if, 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 any, if anyone hasn't watched that, watch Sonic Geometry. Um, it was you actually Eric Rick, and I was the executive producer for the for the second one. In the series and eric and i were i had dinner with him a few weeks ago fantastic guy super yeah. smart guy and um that's so funny because i remember you saying wait a minute you were the guy that did yes. sonic geometry so and i was like yeah yes right. and in that documentary talks about how sound and matter interacts and yeah. how all these different and so that was one of my first experiences with that so to be sitting here with you right now it's crazy it's so tripping you, me you, out. You, it's you tripping have me out. so you've been so successful with this whole mainstream crowd and dealing with the business side of this yes and also being a grounded and yet very spiritually minded person yes who is kind of be the change you want to see in the world right thank you it's kind of a very uh you know you said bob marley you mentioned bob marley earlier and i'd love to i'm a big fan of bob marley yeah I'm i'd love to hear your thoughts on that but how do you navigate this world that can kind of be seen as yes very fast-paced and kind of cutthroat at times how do you navigate that world I think it's important to stay present. I think that um, it can, that, that the world is crazy and and especially, you know, entertainment. And in these days, there's a lot of uh, energy forces coming in to try to, but I think the more we're able to stay present, and for me, that that involves like a, a meditative practice in the morning. Also, I've been doing, I've been doing, taking cold, ice, cold showers. Just I take cold showers. To get it, you do. I didn't know you did too. Wow. Because uh, it's, it, I don't know if you follow Ayurveda. Yes. Right? And in the, in the Ayurvedic tradition base, and I'm good friends with Deepak. Wow. Chakra, and Deepak was telling me you need to take cold showers based on the type of person that I am, my, my, my makeup, my exactly. anatomy and everything. I'm a pill, right? Yeah. yeah. So Same. fire. Same. So cold showers. I, I don't always start with cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I kind of ease into it, but at the end I go full cold. Full cold. And that really refreshes me yes. and, and makes me awake for the day. And for me, it brings me present. Mm -hmm. And whenever I'm staying present in, in the, this matrix, I'm fine. But once I lose my presence and, and, and I, I wake up and I'm immediately reaching for the phone, I'm immediately right into that world, it can it can be overwhelming. And I, mm -hmm. and I have gone down that path before and it's um, it's not somewhere I want to want to go anymore. So now I, I, I just make sure the presence and make sure my practice is important. And then from there, everything else will just 
was flow for me. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, so as far as the business side of this stuff goes, how are people receiving this idea? I mean, you just launched this new, new project, album, right? This new project. You got these awesome songs, right? Life. Yes. Which I, my daughter loves. I love. You have another song. I love you. Yes. It's also done in 432. You have 24. Yes. Right? We have, we have, it's cool. So and why did you choose 24? By the way, that's a very important number to me. Um, I don't know if you know this, but. No, I didn't know that. Oh, 24 is like the, the entire world is based as a mathematician on mod 24. Yeah. Right? Like everything. Wow, see, why? I didn't even know that. So before I, you know, after, actually it wasn't that long after, that was before I met you, I discovered the prime number pattern, right? And so yeah. the prime number pattern was found on mod 24. Wow. It's all based on 24. Yeah, so we're all connected. No, I had <laughs> yeah. not name it. So when I saw that, I was like, 24, wow, yeah. that's cool. Because everything is based on 24. There's a whole longer discussion and it's reciprocal, right? Is also 42. So one over 24 is the only number that has this unique characteristic where one over 24 equals 42, one over 42 equals 24. Wow. It's just 0. 0.42, right? It's so a it's a mirror. Wow. And, and it's also the palindrome. The palindrome is also, you know, the 24's palindrome would be 42. So it's this very unique thing. That's cool. Right? And two to the fourth power is also four to the second power. Wow. Two to the fourth power, like 24, another way of writing 24, is also four to the second power, 16. They both come out to 16. So 24 is this really, really, really important number to me. So when I saw that yeah. your album came out and it had 24, I was, so, like, yeah. I was like, what? You've got to be kidding me. Yeah. That whole thing that you took that design that, that I had drawn on. Yes. The, oh, I should have worn that chain. The wave, yeah, right? necklace, yes. the wave necklace we'll thing that you had made so, so beautifully done. I can't remember the name of the artist that did it. Uh, she's so talented. Yes, uh, Indigo. Indigo, Indigo, right. Indigo. Yeah. She reached out to me once. Super sweet lady. But that is all based on 24 too. Wow. You didn't know that? I did not know that. I did <laughs> I'm telling not know you, that. everything is connected. I did everything not is know connected. That. So, so, you know, how has the music industry taken this yes. idea that you've had to mainstream this healing through yes. 32 hertz? So I'm gonna be honest, when I first came up with this idea, I was talking to you, I was signed to Universal Music. Uh -huh. And I came back and I came to the meeting and I said, guys, I realized, you know, my purpose and this, and, and like, I wanna bring sound healing into the mainstream. <laughs> I'm gonna, oh yeah, uh -oh. I'm gonna. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, like this is what we can do with the music. This how music really affects people. Have, and they look kind of like I, I was an alien. I was in the boardroom, like all of these like executive guys, and they were just looking at me like it did not resonate. It did not resonate in that building. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully there was one guy who said, who just believed in me because of what I had done uh, musically, and just he was able to see I had success producing stuff, and he was just like, let's just. Kind of let them do it and so i had a vision of because of nicola tesla we talked about earlier yeah. volume one frequency volume two energy volume three vibration and it's based off nicola's statement that if you wish to understand the secrets of the universe think in terms of energy frequency and vibration yeah. so i had these three projects that i said these are the three names and i'm going to explore different frequencies in each volume and so they said and i said i only have one album with universal just let Let's just do this one, you know, let's just try it. Like this one guy said, great. It was the first time that an album has in in in, in music history that has been like written on there. The, 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 the frequency of the song promoted through a major label. And and one of the tracks is already on gold. It has millions of plays already. They've, they've, <laughs> one of them's been playing in um, and, and it's Which been spreading around in Europe. I love, I love you. The love first one. That's the first one we released. It's gone gold already, and it's the first time that this music is really making it in a in a mainstream way, in the sense of like being played on radio stations next to songs that are have nothing to do with it. So it for you know they they've been more than you know all those guys more than made their money back. They more than did all that. So it's great now that I, you know after it's been able to have a good launch pad, now we're able to kind of um, step outside of the system, which was great for, for that time. But now I'm able to connect with people like yourself, with other people who are really 
who don't see it as an alien idea, who see it as, wait a minute, this is almost the future. This is how it's obviously makes sense. Frequency, sound, things do affect us. We, and you know, the more um, intentional and conscious we are about how we use that, um, I think this is a better for everyone. So now it's like, it's ever since I've gotten from that, it's just like opportunities keep um, presenting themselves to, to keep, uh, you know, getting this message out there, which is beautiful, which is great. That's so awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. So you're, I think, just like number one song or something in France, right? Yes. This, this last summer. Was playing 17 times a day in French radio, which means this frequency is getting bathed over through the whole so city. Was this, was this I Love You? I Love You. I Love You. Yes. Wow. And it features a, um, a beautiful Colombian artist who synchronistically came into the song. I didn't even know her. I wrote the song thinking, I don't know if they're going to like it simple. One of the, the biggest uh, Colombian stars, her name's Gracie, heard the song somehow before it came through someone's friend that's this. this. Mm -hmm. I want to be a part of it. So that added more, you know, uh, international because, you know, she's speaking Spanish in yeah, the song. Yeah, totally. And so I, she's I, great too. She's, she's great. Fantastic voice. Fantastic. And then you have a you have a French guy in one of your songs yes. on, li on life. Yes. And uh, I love how, and that's, I think it was a genius move because France has laws I used to live in France. Yeah. There's laws on how much percentage of music is not yeah. French speaking. Yeah, you know, yes, exactly. So does that mean that this song gets to be treated as a French yes, song? Yes, it does. Oh, that's and because we recorded movie. it in France, they have laws basically you have to play it. Really? Play French music in the radio. So yeah. So that's why in the song the lyrics say I wrote it in Paris. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering about it. Even the lyrics. It's even there, yeah. That is so you awesome. get a different day, yeah. It's great. And, and they have a, a percentage of radio needs to be songs there. Yeah, forty percent has to be because they want to maintain their language. Which is beautiful. Because language is their culture, right? Yeah, That's beautiful. the whole thing. And, and the French language is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. It should be maintained. It I love that be, language. Yeah, it it's be. a it's one of my favorite languages to speak, actually. It's such a cool language. There's ways to describe things in French that you just cannot describe. They have five different ways to say, of course. Hmm. Right? So that, I used to use this system on how I learn languages, right? And I speak, I speak several languages. And the way I would learn languages is I would listen. I wouldn't follow the Rosetta Stone thing. I hmm. don't believe in that. What I would do is I would try to listen to the words I'd learn, I'd hear the most often. And so, for example, the first time I went to Japan, first word I learned, because I heard it the most often, was dame, right? Dame, which means that's forbidden. It's not allowed. Mm. Whatever <laughs> I was doing. <laughs> By the way, it was the same in Germany, too. The first time I landed in Germany at the airport at Frankfurt, I was going to move there. I was going to live in Germany. And I looked down, and I see the airplane hangar at the airport in Frankfurt, and it said verboten, written on the side. <laughs> forbidden, right? Forbidden. I'm like, and I go to get a car, and I'm like, we're getting a rental car, and I try to park it in this spot, and this guy goes, Das Parkplatz ist verboten. Yeah. You can't park, you yeah. You're not allowed to park there, right? Yeah. And then you go to France, and the first word you hear all the time is, in contrast, right? To tafé, may we, oui, bien sûr. Everything is of course. Mm -hmm. German doesn't even have a way to say of course. Sure, that's they have to, yeah. say, have to say naturally, which right. is like naturally. That's the only way to say of course in German. But in French, they have so many ways to say of course because everything's possible. And wow. it, it says so much about the culture. So think about France as a culture full of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Germany's not, it's more big companies, right? That are already well established. And, and you drive around the Arc de Triomphe. There's no freaking lines. It's like, it's well, it's a, it's, it's a complete shit show, right? Yeah. Everyone's like driving like they can hit each other. Yeah. You have no idea if it's right. You go to Germany, that is so never going to happen, right? Order. So structured. So so is the language a, do you view language as a reflection of a culture or what shapes the culture? I think you, it's hard to separate. It's hard to separate. That, yeah. It's hard to separate. Yeah. So both. the word that you learn in, in Switzerland first was précisement because everything is precision based, precisely. Oh. So they wouldn't say, like in Germany, the two words I learned first were verboten and genau, right? Genau means exactly. So this is a culture that really values exactitude and what rules should be obeyed, mm -hmm. right? Whereas France was not, it was like, of course, if anything's possible, don't worry mm -hmm. about it. It's like, this is the joie de vivre, right? Yeah. They don't have a concept in the same way in Germany as soi de vivre. Yeah. They would say it in French before they would try to explain before it in German. But, but interestingly, in Switzerland, the word was précisement. So I lived in Switzerland for a while too, and 
Precis mold, because these are watchmakers. Mm -hmm. they're, they're focused on precision, right? And very, very detailed precision. Wow. And, and so they don't even really have to have police there because everyone will self-police. Wow. If they see someone speeding through a neighborhood, they'll write down the license plate like everyone's a cop. <laughs> it's, it's just a different world, right? Yeah. Completely the opposite when you cross the border into France, from Geneva into Gaillard, which is yeah. on the French side. Completely different world. That's so interesting, a language as a frequency code of a geographic grid, right? Of a location, that's the code, that's the frequency, and even you, you can hear it in different tones in the different, in the different, um, our different cultures use different actual tones, tones right. of mm -hmm. the voice. Like Chinese. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. we use different, and different cultures, different tones and different things. It's crazy how we, we, we are so conditioned uh, frequency as a communication device, as a um, as, as our vision, as everything we do, it's like uh, it's it only makes sense to me that it's it's organized that way in music. It only makes sense. It's just inevitable. So I'm happy to be just part of one of the people on uh, um, kind of bringing it in. But obviously, it was known by the Egyptians when we oh, went yeah, there. No doubt. Like we saw in the pyramids. Mm -hmm. Like, so tell me about that trip. How was that trip for you? It was the coolest thing. When I, like, I were standing outside the bus and I kind of looked at him and I said, I don't know what's going to happen tonight. We might get taken up or something. He's like, let's go. Let's it's go. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was. <laughs> yeah, let's go. I was kind of joking. He's like, I'm not joking. Let's go. Man. <laughs> let's go. I'm ready for it. No, that trip was unbelievable. When we went into. You even filmed a music video while you were there. I filmed a music video. On the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 24. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it was, it was unbelievable to go. I don't know how these guys got some secret access to go. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, you okay. say it. Yeah. They got some secret access that we went into the pyramids at like midnight or something. Completely. All three pyramids. All three Only pyramids. The second time unlocked. in history. Yeah. That's been done. And just hearing one thing that stood out to me, there was two things because I was going looking through the lens of sound. So and it's always, we see what we're looking for, always. Anyway, so two things that stood out to me. I, um, there was a guy, they had those big basins next to the pyramids. And I don't know if you remember, but the, the guy said that basically how much water would be inside of the basin, they could change the frequency of the pyramid, almost like a glass. You mm -hmm. put water, ding, hit it, you pour some out, it's gonna yeah. be a different tone. Mm -hmm. There was huge basins next yeah. to mm -hmm. the pyramids that the guy was saying they used to. It's like a water dampener on a speaker. Exactly. <laughs> to change the exactly. tone and the frequency. So that showed me these people valued sound. sound. That was about, they were doing something that was. And then hearing those ohms in when we were all as a group only in the King's Chamber, there was a resonance and a sound that I, I hadn't heard before. So something about the, the the shape of the space and the way that it resonated, it was just um, it was really enlightening for me. How was it for you, dude? I mean, it was my uh, that that night was my fourth night in the pyramids. Wow! And uh, the next time I went, they gave me the key. So the very next night, like two nights later, I went again. <laughs> right? They gave me the key. I'm like, I got a key. Yeah. Was, <laughs> wow! It's like I don't know. I guess if you stay five nights, you get a key. I don't know, but. Um, it was hard to make a discovery like you. I mean, like, yeah, we made discoveries and, and they had known, you know, because we found the Alpha Omega, which you probably saw in the rim of the sarcophagus that night. Crazy. And, um, crazy. but it was, uh, it's such an amazing feeling in there and sound does travel differently in there. I don't know if you know this, but you know why sound travels differently? In no, there? why, why? Well, first of all, the speed of sound in air is 343 meters per second. Right. Right. But through granite, the speed of sound is 6,000 meters per second. So sound travels 17 and a half times faster through granite, granite than, than it does air. through air. Dude, that's crazy. So something that's is going crazy. on, right? You're talking about a very advanced crazy. resonance chamber that has these perfect dimensions geometrically to resonate sound in a way that you wouldn't find anywhere else probably on the planet. Dude, you just gave me some thoughts about like how to reduce latency perhaps maybe through through granite you're sending it through instead of sending it through air send it through. i don't know that's crazy i didn't know that that's an interesting idea that's a common problem that's happening oh yeah because i mean i have it with my sound system at home 
when you've got too far of a distance, mm -hmm. right? Well, there's technologies that you can use to try to make up for that. Delay compensation. Yeah. Right, delay compensation, but it's never perfect. But it's cool to see that, yeah, like sound, like it, 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 things travel differently based off of the material that they're in in the space. And that's, that's the one thing that I learned from that Egypt trip. I feel like things were almost, and I don't know if this is the right word, but I feel like things were manifesting differently in that space. And I don't know if that's how the discoveries that you guys have made were able to happen or how, how was that? Because I, I noticed there was things that you guys discovered there that had not been seen yeah. previously. How does that I happen? I think it's a collective consciousness that's shifting right now. Like if you kind of look at the world, I mean, this year, you know, I remember two years ago it, and right after coming back from Peru, I remember I, I came back, you guys stayed, you stayed over Thanksgiving, I think. You were there for Thanksgiving. Yes. And I came back like a few days early because I had to be home with my family for Thanksgiving. And I remember watching the Macy's Day Parade. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling Susie, I was like, man, I feel like I'm stuck in Groundhog Day. Like I turn on Macy's Day Parade and it's the same as I saw last year, the same as I saw the year before, same as I saw the year before that. And I remember saying, you know, don't you feel like we're kind of in this rerun mm -hmm. kind of a thing? Until yesterday, mm. which I turned on Macy's Day Parade, and I was like, we're not in the rerun anymore. Some shifted. Something, something's different, right? Obviously, yeah. COVID happened, and everyone talks about 2020 and clear vision and everything. But I think beyond just what we all have experienced with lockdowns and everything this past year, at least for myself, I have a lot to feel grateful for because it gave me an opportunity to have time alone and spend more time with my family that I yeah. had never been able to do yeah. before. I had no travel for the last year, yeah. right? It's been four seasons now that we have gone full circle. Yes. This. Everyone I talk to is having that same experience. And it's, I think that that's leading to probably uh, some sort of conscious uh, consciousness expansion. You know, this is a time where people have had to go internally and- People go. are asking the bigger questions, yeah. I think. Yeah. Which I think is, is beautiful. It's almost like uh, we needed that, you know, we needed that to, to shift. Uh, everyone I've talked to literally has grown so much from this from this experience, which is, you know, we only grow through challenging things, right? Mm -hmm. It's always like that growing pain, mm -hmm. you know, lift weights, gotta put the heavy weight on to get mm -hmm. the muscle. So now that's, it makes sense that this is all coming out now. And I find, I find like, like going back to what you asked me earlier, right now doing what I'm doing with the music, is received way differently than it was even when I was trying to release it two years ago. For whatever reason, it just wasn't coming out then. It just, I don't know if it just wasn't the right time. Obviously, it, it, I believe things happen in divine time. It just wasn't, I was not able to get it out. I had a lot of the material completed just for whatever reason. I kept hitting block after block. And then for some reason during this time is when um, a lot of these new things and new mathematics they're coming with, new ideas. People are, I feel like I'm more open to that. And I'm noticing artists in my community. Even in the mainstream. Even in the mainstream. Artists in my community are asking me about it. They're like, oh, what's that? It's almost like if you show a painter that there's new colors, you know, they're going to be like, wow, that's interesting. Didn't, didn't you say like one of those artists also was a, getting an award or something they're speaking on? Uh, on a podium at some like award kind of a thing and saying, hey, Major is really into this yes. new music stuff. Yes, that was, that was Justin. Yes, Justin had a uh, had a event at, and this was right for a long time. He had like his uh, big music industry event where he was showing his new film, uh, yeah, YouTube yeah. series. And they had all of the top people in the industry. And he suddenly, only person, I was the only person he said something to. He said, hey, Guys, if you want to learn about sound healing and stuff like this, Major is studying this. And obviously with Justin being so like on top at that moment, all of the people in the industry were like, I want to know what that's about. So it, it instantly like it shows how in just a small space, a small room, you can reach critical people who are influential in a certain environment. And that time it was in the music business. And from that moment, um, a lot of this information was be able to, I mean, I'm not sure if everyone is able to fully absorb everything at that moment, but at least seeds were planted that previously they maybe had never heard of. And so I feel like this is rising to the consciousness of a lot of people, which is perfect. Yeah. Isn't it amazing if we can make a small change in music and accompany that with a different higher order intention, 
intention. Like your lyrics, I, I love the thing about the thing I love about your lyrics is that they're they're easy to understand, but very profound. So it's very inspirational to mm -hmm. listen to the words and and you know the lyrics from from some of your songs. Um, I'm trying to think of which one it is. Maybe it's 24, but the the lyrics are, have a very high order associated with them about self introspection and going to the next level and finding love. Oh uh, yeah. And Thank can you. you talk about that a little yes, bit? Yes, I think that um, you hit it right on the head. Intention. Um, even going to Ayurveda, one of the things that I, that they talked about was when the chef is preparing the food, his intention or his or her intention goes into the energy of what you're eating, like that, you know, what their energy goes into it. And so I felt that that was just the natural progression in the music as we started the company Intentional Media, which is all about that. And it's about being very mindful of um, just what energy we want to put out. So in, in music, I look at it a little bit like some of the songs I look at it. Some of the songs are just completely stream of consciousness, which is just a flow of just what where I'm at in my life. And some of that is less polished, it's less right or wrong, it's just what it is. And some of those I look back at later on, I'm like, ah, but it just was a moment where I was. And then a lot of them I look at as these will be like, these will live on much past my life in this physical form like is our energy transmissions that what people can hear in thousands of years and one of the things i'm so glad you recognize that is that simplicity is like a main key that i've noticed if you want to do it if you want to reach people that they're in a way they can understand i try to say it in the simplest way so that it, as as language evolves and changes it will still be a um something that I hope people, I believe people will be able to perceive in many generations. Um, so for me, it's important that I put, even though the sales went down when I put inspirational, too much inspirational, so I'm finding the balance. Find balance. It's important that I have something in there that leaves a legacy, you know, of, of what I really want to stand for. That is so awesome. Well, that is a, your story is a beautiful story. I have one last question for you. What is it that inspires you? Um, I'm inspired by, well, I'm inspired by the idea of being an inspiration. So I feel my purpose is to inspire. And the more that I can do that, I feel like I'm walking my purpose. So yeah, I'm inspired by inspiration. Yeah. Wow. Well, you're it's like that, that cycle, right? It's like a loop. <laughs> it's a loop. If I'm inspired right. by that. The more you, is what you give is what you will get back, right? Yeah. In, in the universe. And I think that's absolutely true. It's so great seeing you, my friend. Yes, and thank you. I'm so thank excited you so for your album and everything and for all your success. And very excited to see what you will be inspired to do to bring this intention and frequency to the entire world through mainstream. Thank you. And, thank you. And I'll do whatever I can to help. Before we go, uh -huh. what inspires you? What inspires me? You know, actually, moments like this inspire me because um, I, I could go through a whole list of books and quotes and all that kind of stuff, which I've kind of post a lot already on, but right. it's moments like this that inspire me because um, having these kind of discussions on real people who have had real life journeys and have faced challenges through their life, right? Like you said, you faced cancer. I mean, that's a, a really scary challenge that someone would have to face. And I have overcome it and then are able to tell their story and look back on everything with gratitude. And even though not everything in your life prior was perfect, you know, someone asked me the other day, they said, do you think that you have regrets? And I said, well, you know, to me, it's kind of like a butterfly. Mm. Does a butterfly regret the time wow. it was a caterpillar? Wow, it can't. Probably not, right? Yeah. It probably says, I'm so grateful that I had all those experiences yeah. so that I could end up becoming to be and expressing the who I am now. So there's no mistakes that can be made, right? We're not making mistakes. It's, it's just, we have learnings. And, and when we look at life from the perspective of there are no mistakes, there's only learnings that we have. Mm, the only that. mistake could ever be is if we didn't learn. Is if we didn't learn. Right? Yeah. And I think that's what the universe provides this experience for us for so that we can see those patterns that keep coming at us over and over and over again so we can finally learn. 
that's powerful right there. That's that's the, you just hit it. You just hit it exactly in the head. That's everything I've been going through. It's a pattern, and if we if we can learn a lesson and see it, yep, that's it. Thank you, man. You inspired me. You're the best, man. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Peace.